Welcome to Racing to Win, midweek show. So the focus is Happy Valley on Wednesday night. Just the eight races for coverage this week. And we've got it previewed for you right here on the show. Joined in the studio to look at it closer by Paul Lally and Tom Wooden. Tom, after a big day at Shartin on Sunday, the dress rehearsal, we're back to a, a pretty low-key meeting this week. It is low-key. Mark, hello to you and to everyone. Yes, uh, I don't think there's any such as a standout at Happy Valley on uh, Wednesday night. If you were looking to maybe say there was a standout, maybe all is good who's uh, shooting for five victories in a row coming up in race number seven of uh, the night. But it looks fairly even through the course of the evening. It does indeed. What about jackpot punters, Paul? Have they got stuff to look forward to? They have a uh, six-up win bonus, 500000 going to that. So that should get up past the three million mark uh, for that particular one. There's a few first starters as well throughout the card. One interesting one who's been trialling were a uh, very well prosperous win. He has, he's shown plenty of pace in those trials. But the countdown is on to the second Sunday in December for the Hong Kong International Race Day. coming up on the Sunday at Sha Tin. Of course, the Wednesday night prior, it's IJC night, and a new name appears amongst the jockey ranks this year. It's the Kazakh Bayazan Mirzabayev, and he spoke to our very own Nick Child. Yes, I'm very happy. I can to first time coming to Hong Kong. I love this year and the Sherga Cups, uh, like same thing. I don't write my problem in the papers and the visa and I'm very happy I can come in now to Hong Kong. Uh, Burazad, how much do you know about Hong Kong racing? I mean, you've ridden in quite a few different countries, but you've never ridden in Hong Kong before. I guess, you know, the fact that you'll be able to, to ride against our champion, Zach Purton, and ride against, obviously, a lot of world-class jockeys, um, you, you must certainly be looking forward to the, the, the challenge, aren't you? Yes, uh, Hong Kong racing is, is not uh, complete news. I many years I follow this uh, country's racing, and every year I show every race in the this December the champions, the many Hong Kong Cup day, and this uh, jockey challenge too is is uh, very popular in the Europe too. I know many jockeys I follow. Uh, how you tell? Uh, uh, before Joe Marrera and uh, Jack Potton and and uh, many jockeys from Europe coming to I following career before. In Europe, Burzan, you know you're you're very well known. Obviously, you were three times champion in the Czech Republic, four times champion in Germany. Um, I found a few old um, news stories uh, regarding you and your success and. In Germany, I mean, you've had a lot of very good horsemen help you along the way. Obviously, Andreas Voller, uh, Peter Schergen, of course. And I actually uh, I read a quote from um, Andreas Suborix, who, who said he was glad that he wasn't riding against you because you almost would have been too good. I mean, that's, that's, that's high praise indeed, isn't it? I mean, you've had a lot of people help you in Germany. Yes, uh, the first time me called the, after this uh, nomination to Hong Kong, uh, Andreas Suboris uh, congratulated me to riding the very happy uh, I can to see in Hong Kong. And uh, yes, exactly. Yes, uh, from Germany, many horse go to Hong Kong to Racing. Uh, I know one horse uh, last year we sold uh, the name Rocky Chan after I changed the name. He running in Hong Kong too. And yes, of course, it's, uh, the Germany is uh, racing is a little bit uh, different. Uh, it's not uh, like France, uh, the pace uh, like uh, more uh, like Germany in the Hong Kong. Um, and obviously, um, for you, Burazan, I mean, it is, you've been to Japan, you've had a Group 1 winner in Japan, you, you've, you've ridden in um, 
most of Europe. Um, you've ridden in, in Saudi Arabia. In second is Sepian. They were followed then by Seon on the far side, running on is Montini. Then getting through on the inside is Villa Royale. Lenise makes up late ground, as does Stormy Air, but they've still got to catch Gerzev. Gerzev, he's beginning to paddle. Lenise is reining him in. Lenise moved up on the outside, took the lead, and Lenise won. Got up to beat Gerzev. A great ride from Christoph there. Third in the race on the inside there was Villa Royale. They were followed then by Stormy Air. Italo. Next then was Mascalino. What about Hong Kong one day? Is, is that sort of on the radar? Would, would, would you like to come and have a have a stint in Hong Kong if that was ever possible? Yes, this is my this, this option. This, I wanted to win many countries with some racing. Uh, this is uh, I don't start a big race or a small race. I wanted win to winning many countries on racing. Are, are you staying at all for um, for the international meeting on the Sunday, Burizan? Have you got any rides possibly lined up on the Sunday? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't stay in the Hong Kong. Uh, I need to go to Japan. Maybe it's, uh, Sunday is is uh, hunting Group One race for two years old. I have uh, interest in Philly and to join Japan Group 1 riding. Maybe I can give some riding in Hong Kong, but this is difficult uh, and can, as is not more a big chance. Fascinating road there, Tom, for Bayazan to make his way to Hong Kong. We know the international riders, they've been announced, but there's a four-way go for the last spot for the expat jockeys here. Yeah, there's plenty of uh, hopes uh, fighting it out, and tomorrow night at Happy Valley Wednesday night is uh, D-Day or D-Night for uh, most of those uh, jockeys. Uh, Brenton Abdullah riding so well after his uh, four-timer at the, the weekend, Paul. He's right in the, the mix. Uh, Vincent Ho, of course, will get there with the local leading jockey, but uh, Andre Adzini, uh, Matthew Chadwick also not far away. It always comes down to this, doesn't it? We, know, we always talk about this with meeting to go there's always about two or three vying for it and no different this year so yeah I think it'll all unfold really nicely on uh, Wednesday night. Andrea Rizzani, Lyle Hewitts and Luke Ferraris and also Brenton Abdullah the four going for that last spot on Wednesday night December 6. Bit before then we go to Happy Valley on Wednesday night this week for an eight race program and uh, we are racing on the sea course and it's a later start of course with one less race for meeting number 21 of the season. 7-10 the first in the two races that we preview on the show, races 7 and 8, the two class threes over the 1650 and the 1200 metres. Race number seven, the first of them. Prime Minister is on the class drop. He's got a very good record in this grade. All is good. He's had two trials since we last saw him on opening day. Kimberley goes up in trip. Storm Legend has placed five from 12 course and distance. E Legend's a three time course and distance winner. Red Acclaim goes up in trip. Furthest he's raced over was at Chester, where he was placed over the 1500 metres. Red Majesty's an eight time course and distance winner. 18 Palms has a tongue tie going on. And Foolish Heart. He races around Happy Valley for the first time, but he did trial well there prior to his Hong Kong debut. Looking at the speed map here, Tom, and outgate even from the wide draw, should have the pace to get across. Yeah, he's got uh, plenty of early toe. This uh, horse, a four-year-old uh, out of uh, the UK, and uh, he led up again last uh, time out, and he's led his last uh, three runs. Uh, e Legend shouldn't be too far away. He's drawn on barrier number three. He's a horse that also uh, can lead. Another horse, Paul, that likes to be up on the pace is 18 Palms, but he's got barrier number 12. Yeah, all as good as up in trip, so he might make it a little bit harder for 18 Palms, but he's drawn eight himself, all is good. Again, Red Majesty, we know him. He can lead if he wants to as well. So there should be good pace in this race. Paul, well, we're going to start with the all is good. He was a gunner horse so often. Mm. He was going to win next time. He was going to win next time. He finally got the job done once and hasn't been beaten since. We have to go back to September, though, when we last saw him on race day. Yeah, exactly. No, he's won four in a row. He's gone from a rating of 46 up to 72. And three of those wins have been on wet tracks. He's won once over the 1650 here at Happy Valley and ran 10th. So, look, if he comes up short, he's one I'll be definitely taking on.
Yeah, I think he'll be short in the race. But look, I think he can win again. That horse on the inside, of course, Outgate, he beat him here. He's been able to come out and win uh, two starts ago. Uh, France has been very patient with him, 73 days between uh, runs, and he's had those uh, two trials, and uh, this is the, the most recent of them. He covered a bit of ground here in the, the trial, uh, Paul, but uh, here he is uh, alongside of uh, Helios Express, who's about to uh, range up on his outside. Yeah, he won really nicely on the weekend as well. And look, all is good. As I say, he's had those three wins on wet tracks, so you'd think he'd be well suited to the all weather. I'm just not sure about him as a Happy Valley horse, that's all. All right, he has had one start at Happy Valley. We're going to bring his graphic up shortly. You can see there under one of the apprentices, all is good. Just running fourth, Helios Express and Karma also in that trial. And this is what he has done, Tom. He's now a four time winner. Yeah, it took him a long time, as you said, Mark, to get on the, the board, but he hasn't looked back. And now he's up into class uh, three uh, once uh, again here off the back of that victory last uh, time out. Obviously, more weight to carry. Not too much though, only going from 124 to 127, but it's just a case, uh, Paul, of getting around Happy Valley in front. Yeah, look, he, he has run well over the 1200 in Happy Valley, uh, and he has won over 1400, but the 1650, it was just a little query. Yep. We move on to our next replay, Tom, which features Quantum Patch, who raced wide in this race on the back of some strong trials. He's out of the informed Pierre Ong stable. And the other horse in this race is Maldives. And uh, he's coming back from this 1800 metre race to a distance that he's won twice over. Yeah, I don't think he's the worst in this race. Uh, Maldives, printed of Dulla for uh, David Hall. But uh, on Quantum Patch, there was a, a lot of support for him last uh, time out. He was 5-1. to one. He had a, a tough run in transit, covered a fair bit of ground around the home turn, uh, Paul. So considering it wasn't a bad run, really. Yeah, I thought it was a good run. And he's run se second off uh, a 63 rating. He's on the 62 rating over the course and distance as well. So if if he gets any sort of run, I think he's a big chance. Prime Minister Paul is a horse that you've quite mm. often had in your selection, certainly around Happy Valley. Class drop this week. He's coming off a sixth last time in a very strong field at Shard Tin. Are you back on the Prime Minister board this week? Definitely. Now he's back there. I've been waiting for him to get back to Happy Valley. This Sylvester uh, leading this field. This is a class two. This is a really tough race. And Sylvester sort of walked them in front. You can see him finishing off nicely down the outside, coming back to a course he likes back into a grade that he's performed well and I, I think he's a good chance in this. Yeah, he looks a strong chance here. Uh, Ricky has always placed this horse well when he gets uh, down into uh, class three. Of course, uh, Sorvest has come out and won the Panasonic Cup and you could argue that uh, Tula Bagheel was a little, a little unlucky in it. Yeah. He was indeed. We'll see Tula Bagheel at Sha Tin on the weekend too. Now, Foolish Heart, Tom only had one trial before his debut. He then ran uh, ninth at Sha Tin, then fifth over the 1400 behind Drom Beg Benner. He has placed over the 1600 at Eagle Farm before arriving. Yeah, so his first up run wasn't too bad, and then he certainly improved to coming into last time out. He was over 100 to 1 in the market, certainly didn't run like a, an over 100 to 1 shot. And he was three back on the fence. Uh, I thought he stayed on well enough for Paul. Of course, um, Green and White was just defeated here. He looks a, a promising type. Maybe a little laboured over the, the final stages, but with a, a good draw again, he should uh, receive a nice run. Yeah, he has won a trial at Happy Valley as well. So uh, with that under his belt, I think he's a chance. I'm going to include him. That's a good push for Foolish Heart. Now we haven't seen Eta 18 Palms for a while either, Paul. He was scratched last time. Tongue tie goes on. Wide draw. Barry number 12. He's had two trials. They've been a little bit mixed. How do you assess him in this race? Yeah, look, I'm not so sure with from the wide draw with him. He was sort of on the cusp for me. Uh, 18 Palms. He's a horse I've had a bit of time for, but just with that wide draw and look, his trials have just been okay. I'm happy just to watch. Yeah, I'm leaving him out as well. Uh, interesting they stick the tongue tie on for the, the first time, so maybe he's just been getting the tongue over the, the bit and doing a, a few things uh, wrong with that. So uh, interesting gear change, but just the draw was the, the big factor and the, the concern I had too. All right, so it's a leave for 18 palms from the boys. That's a look at those runners in race number seven. You're with the toppy. Yeah, I am. Uh, Prime Minister, I quite like him in this race. I think he's going to get all the conditions to suit. Uh, the, the little query is the, the weight he has to carry, but uh, he's quite a big horse anyway. Quantum Patch was wide, and he was entitled to drop out last time, and he didn't. So I thought it was a good run from him, and he has performed well over the course and distance. Foolish Hearts won a trial at Happy Valley, and E-Legend uh, should get a nice run. He's run third off 68, and he's at a 67 rating. So I'm going to leave the favourite out. 112, 11, 6. I'm going to take a chance with the, the likely favourites again here. All is good to make it five in a row. I um, don't think there's too many issues with coming to 16.50 for the first time. Zach Pert and Francis Law, I think he's trolled up well enough leading into this. Prime Minister, one of the main dangers, uh, Quantum Patch. And the other one that goes in is uh, Maldives, the two-time course and distance. So when he sort of got hampered near the 400 metres last time out behind uh, Lean Hero. So 3-1, 12 and 8. There you have it, both Paul and Tom with different on-top selections in race number seven. We're going to take a break now on Racing to Win. We'll be back after this to have a look at race number eight.
Welcome back to Racing to Win Part 2 of the show and it's time for Paul Lully to come on down for Pick of the Board. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. You should get a job as a game show host after that. Um, the price is right. Last run reminder, uh, Golden Rise is the horse. Have a look at, at him here. They didn't go overly quick in this race at all. And uh, once he got in the clear, this is a debut run for John Size. We've seen John Size horses really improve for the run. And you can see how slow they went. 1.78 uh, slower than standard for the first 800. And look how the, he runs on really nicely at the end. He's going to be tough to beat. What will the price be? That's the thing. It's 2.6 at the uh, early, uh, in the early call, but I think he'll be odds on, won't he? We'll find Maybe. out. We'll find out. You're making it he nice should be. Need, nice and easy to remember. Race six. Number six today. Yeah, we look after you, Mark. Yeah, keep it simple. <laughs> exactly. That's what we like. Race number eight is our second race to preview here on the show, and it's the High Island Handicap over the 1,200 metres. Excellent Piers has a hood going back on. Brave Star is a two-time course and distance winner. Golden Artie carries an extra six pounds for his last start win. Never too soon, Americ to spec, so also have ones next to their name. Giddy Up has his first start in Hong Kong. Denfield, good draw, Vincent Ho and Danny Shum. And Zoom Boom comes up in grade on the back of that last start course and distance win, Tom. Bit of pace here, Rapal O'Liner, he likes to uh, roll forward to Nabu Legends being handy. But what do they do with colourful Emperor Brave Star from their draws? I know, it's going to be a little bit tricky because both those two horses do like to go forward. So. Yeah, colourful emperor. He, he just worries me where he's going to be in the run. He's got Jack Pert in the board, so maybe he just has to push on and try and get outside O'Liner. If that happens, then it's going to be Brave Star will be looking for some cover somewhere. Our focus, though, is one of the last start winners in the race. Never too soon is his name. Nick spoke to his jockey, Keegan Tamello. Keegan DeMello, uh, Wednesday night racing, coming around again quickly, of course. Happy Valley, never too soon uh, is your ride in race number eight. And uh, it was uh, very pleasing, I'm sure, to get the win on him last time. Yeah, he won a really good race last time. Obviously, he had uh, the barrier one. It's going to be a little bit tougher this time from barrier nine. He's not a horse that has a lot of speed, but uh, he, he's got good form and uh, he does like to come from off them and he shows a good turn of foot. So hopefully with a few extra pounds he's made the necessary improvement and I'm sure he'll be in the finish again. I know you haven't got much experience with him but that, that was yielding ground obviously naturally it looks like it's going to be better ground he has got form on, on a good surface so versatile horse as well? Yeah very versatile as I said he, he was very lucky to get the inside draw last time and uh, make a run down the inside where I thought the going was a little bit better on the night and uh, yeah just hopefully things go his way and uh, he'll get the best out of him. He has had a trial up at Chung Fai, he was his last of the five, but I guess we don't read too much into his trials and just, you know, expect what he can do on race days is what he's good at. Yeah, look, I thought it was quite a tough barrier that he was in and, uh, yeah, but uh, he's not a horse that shows you much in the morning and uh, so I'm not surprised he, he didn't show much in the trial either, but uh, he seems to put his best foot forward race day. Form's working out okay, he beat, beat Wonderkit, so it um, would have been nice to have seen him come out and win recently. Oh, yeah, definitely, and, uh, you know, Wonderkit's obviously on the up as well, so... This horse is just um, improving on a, a good notch, so like I've mentioned before, um, just hopefully he brings that form to the races again. Yeah, if he does, he certainly could give you a big chance. Um, you and David Hall have um, sort of got a, a nice thing going. I know you've only had sort of limited rides for him, but there's a couple of winners, and he continues to, to give you good support. Yeah, he's, he's given me a lot of support, uh, a few winners, which is, which is always nice, and uh, you know, you just try to get your name out there, and uh, I'm breaking through in a, in, in a few more yards now, which is great, and uh, yeah, it's just... Um, Hopefully we can crack that, uh, that break where, where, where you get constant support. There he is, Keegan DeMello, talking never too soon. And this is Tom talking about a last start second of Colourful Emperor. He does have an extra six pounds, uh, Tom, because Zach Purton takes over from Angus Chung and Sugar Sugar is always a chance over the 1,200 here, isn't he? Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good effort from Sugar Sugar last uh, time out. Uh, he's been pretty consistent. He's uh, got a good draw, so I think uh, he can certainly be right there at the, the finish. And Colourful Emperor, just if he can get some luck from Barrier 8, hope he can, because he's not done too much wrong in his uh, last three starts, uh, Paul. I think he's getting close to a win, but no. whether it's this meeting or not, I don't know. No, I agree. And you could, you could see um, Sugar Sugar was all over the place, mm. wasn't he, backwards and forwards. Trying to, trying to get on and uh, of course Zach will be on uh, that horse as well um, but uh, the Golden Rise I think is probably his best bet of the day. Club Soda is, is uh, a, a horse that's only had the one start and uh, John Size has improved with the one and there's that colourful emperor I was talking about Got as well. Circuit Severed as well, there's a lot of pace in that race. Oh, yeah there is isn't there. And President Choice Early coming down in grade for Michael Cheng so yeah. 
They are Zach's rides for Happy Valley on Wednesday night. Uh, Golden Arty is a only start winner at Happy Valley. Paulie was able to sneak up the inside. Brave Star second. Excellent Piers outside the leader at this point. He runs fifth. The, the thing with Golden Arty is he won really nicely last season and he just didn't back it up at all. And he just. I just wonder if he, he can put two together. That was a query. Maybe Happy Valley's the key. I don't know. But uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave him out. Contrasting runs, really. Golden Artie was able to uh, shoot up the fence here and uh, Brave Star had to come a few, around a, a few mm. runners on the turn and covered a bit of ground there. So, um, yeah, that was probably the winning of the race for Golden Artie. Keen on your thoughts, Tom, on A. Merrick to spec. So, such a dominant win last time on the back of a very good trial. Just this grey. Can you see him turning it around at all? Oh, I'm not sure really. Uh, four goes in this uh, graded class three, hasn't won, hasn't placed, um, was a favourite here delivering over CU again and had a, a good turn of foot the last 150 metres, uh, Paul, but this has sort of been his issue in the past class three. Yeah, look at fifth, sixth, fifth, eighth uh, on those four starts with light weights as well. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the same as you, I'm going to leave him out. OK, so no for A. Merrick to spec. So Zoom Boom is another last start winner down in Great Paul. He has placed up in class previously. What about him in this field? Uh, the draw worries me with him. Uh, Zoom Boom, he got a perfect run last time uh, when he did win the race, but uh, from barrier 12... I don't like him from that draw. Yeah, not from barrier 12. And he only just got up in the shadows here. Uh, threw over on the inside. Might have given a little bit of a carve up there to a wind speeder over the, the final stages uh, to Angus uh, Chung. But barrier 12 is the big uh, downfall for him. OK, so uh, zoom boom from the wide draw is a no. But your selections, Paul? Going to go with uh, the five. Uh, sugar, sugar on top. Any sort of run. I think he, he would have gone a lot closer last start. And he should go well here. Denfield from a better draw. Excellent pair is going to put him in for third. He's been placed of a lot higher ratings than this. And Cal for Emperor just needs some luck. 5, 10, 1, 6. We saw the run through before of Denfield through one of the, the replays. He just had no luck. He wasn't the quickest away uh, from the gates, uh, Denfield. And then he was caught wide, pressed forward. So covered a whole lot of ground. He's going to get a, a much more economical run here from barrier number two. And he's trolled up nicely coming into this. He was held together. So tend to be too brave star. He'll need a, a little bit of luck from the draw. Don't think Golden Arty's uh, the worst for Ricky Yu, Andre Atzini. He's uh, uh, coming into this with the extra six pounds. And Colour for Lempra will also need some luck from the draw as well. At 10 2 4 Six. A full race by race breakdown on the website hkjc.com. Click on audio and video, and that'll include replays and previews of all the best bets, long shots, and plays, Paul. Yeah, so I'm going to go with Prime Minister. We talked about him already in race number seven. We can watch the race once again. This was a lot harder. Sylvester's come out in one since, and they didn't go overly quick in this race either. You can see him highlighted there, uh, coming down the outside, finishing off well. Atala Bagil will be racing on the weekend in the Class 1, so I think this is his go here, um, Prime Minister, and he wasn't that far away. You can see Dancing Code, another good horse coming through. So he's come out of a really strong field, so he's the best. And we're going to make the long shot with the lightweight strive for glory. So thousand metres uh, for him and just because uh, there's so much pace in the race that's why I'm going to go with it. The play I'm going to do in race number six which is race numbers four, five, six. Scott's Tycoon, high percentage and golden rise. First bet comes up in race number three, horse 8M Unicorn. Don't think he was totally suited by the track conditions here. A last time out was a rain affected track, but still ran well. Took him a wee while to pick up in the straight. At this point, he didn't look like he was really going anywhere, but he was able to attack the line strongly late over the final with stages once he got going. Uh, so I think back on top of the ground, he had a big chance for Casper Founds and Vincent Ho M Unicorn. The value comes up in that same race as Paul uh, with oversubscribe for the same reasons. There's a lot of pace in that uh, race and he can certainly run over the top of them if he's at his best for uh, David Hall, Alexi Bedell and we'll include him with Savvy Delight and Prosperous Smile who's on debut for race number four. Best bet comes up in the last to number 10 at Denfield. Good draw. Vincent Ho's written him to victory before. Knows the horse well and he's primed to get a good trip in the final race. Gallant Crown is on the class drop and last time he came back down into class four with the top weight. He was victorious and has a very good record. Course and distance and the play. Race 8, 10 Denfield and 6. A colourful emperor in a forecast 10 and 6. Looking at the diary about what is upcoming after Wednesday night, we head back to Sha Tin on Sunday. 12.15 trackside live on air for a 12.45 start. We'll be taking the Japan Cup as well. Class 1 Chevalier Cup, the preview for that one or the feature for that one. And back to Happy Valley on Wednesday the 29th for another 8 race card. But it is Happy Valley to tomorrow night, Tom, and then that uh, Class 1 feature on Sunday. Yeah, looking forward to seeing Super Sunny sing back. I dare say Vincent mm. Ho's probably engaged to a ride there, and uh, Loyal Bobo, one I'm looking forward to, Paul. Yeah, first starter for him, and he's looked really good in the trials.
But that is a racing to win for Wednesday night at Happy Valley. We'll see you for the first at 10 minutes past seven.